Hey everyone and welcome to MacTuts Plus. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the backup software CrashPlan. Far more advanced than something like Time Machine, CrashPlan has a mixture of free and paid for services. Whilst CrashPlan offers a number of online backup subscriptions where you can pay to backup to their servers, the CrashPlan software itself is actually free to use for backing up to external hard drives, local computers on our network, and even friends' computers across the internet. We're going to set up all three. The first thing we need to do is visit the CrashPlan website. This is at crashplan.com. The CrashPlan software itself is always a free download. Any references to a trial is simply to take advantage of their online backup solutions. When you register for a CrashPlan account, you are automatically subscribed to a 14-day trial. No payment information is taken, and you can simply continue to use CrashPlan if you decide not to use their online service. Select Download from their main page, and then select Download for Mac OS X. Once the app is downloaded, open up the disk image, and then select Install CrashPlan. CrashPlan is powered by Java. This means in order to use it, you will need to install Java on your Mac. Java is no longer included as standard within OS X. As soon as the installation is finished, OS X will notice that Java is required and will automatically suggest downloading and installing it. Whilst Java is a very popular platform and is used on many devices and operating systems, Apple no longer includes it within OS X due to any potential security vulnerabilities it may introduce. If you're comfortable using Java, which many people are, you can continue the installation. If, however, you'd prefer not to use Java, you will not be able to use CrashPlan. Java is automatically downloaded and installed, similar to a software update or printer download. As soon as it's completed, CrashPlan will be able to launch. CrashPlan is made up of two parts, the CrashPlan interface and the CrashPlan engine. The CrashPlan engine runs behind the scenes at all times. This allows CrashPlan to be continually backing up, in a similar way to how Time Machine is constantly running. The interface itself merely allows us to control aspects of CrashPlan and make changes. Backups are not reliant on the application running. CrashPlan requires registration information, so either register as a new account or use an existing one. Any computers you add to an existing account will be remembered, so when you sign in elsewhere, you will see your other computers listed. The CrashPlan interface, although looking rather dated, is still very easy to use. We have our destinations, where our backups will go to, and our files, what's being backed up. I'm going to add further folders to backup by selecting the Change button underneath Files. From here, we're given a traditional hierarchical view of the hard drive and any attached storage to the Mac. I'm going to backup the Applications folder as well. If I try and remove any folders, CrashPlan will warn me that if I do so, it will remove all the backups of those folders. Once you're happy with your folder selection, select Save. CrashPlan will then calculate how much space the chosen folders take up, as well as how many files are located within them. Now we've chosen what to backup, we need to choose where to backup. I'm going to backup to a folder which includes hard drives. To do this, under the Destinations panel, select Folder. As you can see, there are no available folders because nothing has been configured. Click Select, and then choose a folder. Here, I'm choosing a USB drive that I've attached to the Mac. I've also specified a subfolder, just to make organising backups easier. We can choose multiple backup destinations, for example, multiple hard drives. As an example, I'm going to create a folder on the desktop called Backups. 
I'm then going to add this folder within Crash Plan as a backup destination. This is done in the same way as before. Crash Plan includes the ability to backup to as many destinations as you'd like, so you can alternate between external hard drives should you want to take them off site or have backup archives. Additionally, you're given the full information regarding where these backups are stored in the right hand column. This shows you the exact location and the name of the backups. To delete a backup, we simply specify it and click delete. We have to accept that all the backups will be deleted before we can do so. Now that we've specified a backup folder, Crash Plan will automatically start backing up at a later date. However, we can force the backup to start now by selecting the folder and clicking Start Backup. We can either do this in the Destinations panel or under the main backup panel. Once we start the backup, Crash Plan will begin to analyse how much data is needed. It will then begin to back up. Crash Plan offers a number of features and includes encrypting the backups by default. This means should your external backup drive be lost or stolen, the data on it will remain encrypted. We can click the information button to provide us with further information about exactly what is being backed up. Even if we quit the application, the backups will still be running in the background thanks to the Crash Plan engine. Launching the Crash Plan interface can take some time, so to provide some at a glance information, there's a Crash Plan menu item. This allows you to pause backups, show Crash Plan, or even quit entirely. As you can see, launching the Crash Plan interface can take a little time, so it's better to not be using it frequently if possible. To allow Crash Plan to back up onto other computers on your network, all you need to do is install Crash Plan on another computer and sign in with the same login credentials that you created or signed in with earlier on. Crash Plan sets everything else up for you. All you need to do is select the relevant computer from the Destinations tab. Once you've selected Start Backup, Crash Plan will add it to the backup queue. If there's an existing backup running, for example, we're still backing up to our external hard drive, Crash Plan will move on to this computer once it's finished. Alternatively, we can pause individual backups and resume backups that we'd like to start. For example, if we urgently needed an off-site backup created, we could pause a backup to a computer and begin a backup to an external hard drive instead. And just like before, we can click the info button to gather further information about the progress of our backup. A great feature of Crash Plan that will remain free is the option to backup and allow backups from friends' computers. Provided both of you have a decent internet connection, you can create your own ad hoc cloud backup service. This will allow you to both provide an off-site backup solution to each other, giving you all the benefits of an off-site solution without the cost. This is done through the use of codes. Crash Plan assigns a six digit PIN number to each user. You provide this to your friend or request it from your friend to allow you to configure the backups both to and from your friend's computer. As you can see, we have been assigned a code here and we also have the option to add a code for our friend. This will allow him to backup to our computer. I'll enter that now and then we'll be able to select the friend from the list, confirming the person. Once we enter the code and click continue, we're provided with the person's name and email address. This allows us to verify that the person we're allowing to back up is indeed a person we know. I can then allow my friend to back up to my computer by ticking the box and then hitting save. Now I've let my friend back up to my computer, Let's have him return the favor and allow me to back up to his computer. To do this, we specify this via the destinations panel. Select it, and then in the panel, select friends. Again, enter your friend's backup code and then select start backup. As we've entered our friend's backup code, Crash Plan requires no configuration on their end to start the backups. If we'd provided our backup code to our friend, 
we would not have needed to specify and set up his backups under the friend panel. This adds an extra layer of security if you'd rather create the backup system and set up yourself. Going back to the backups panel, we can see the Mac Pro I was backing up to is now powered off. However, the connection to our friend's computer, called Joe, is up and running, so we're able to start backing up to that. As usual, we can click the info panel to give us further information about what's being backed up. CrashPlan has a number of options and settings that don't really need to be changed, however, we can if we wish to. We can specify the name of this Mac to make it easier to identify. CrashPlan uses quite a fair bit of CPU power. The reason is that it's not only copying files to a backup destination, it's compressing them, encrypting them, and even analyzing them to see if it can deduplicate. This means it won't have to back up the same file more than once if you've got it in several locations. To perform all this, it does require quite a bit of processing power. We can alter how much processing power CrashPlan can use using the settings panel. Additionally, we can set alerts, whether it be a tweet or an email, to notify us when a backup is complete or if there are any problems. CrashPlan saves all incoming backups, such as friends and other computers, to your home folder. To change this, we simply click on configure and we can change all the settings regarding incoming backups. We can click on default backup archive location and specify where we'd like to save incoming backups. It's recommended to save them to an external hard drive, in the same way you would back up your own data to an external hard drive. CrashPlan will take care of reshuffling any data around, so you don't need to manually move anything. So let's have a look at a few more options within the settings panel before we continue. Under backup, we can select when we'd like backups to run. By default, CrashPlan is always running. However, to conserve processing power, and your battery life, we can specify certain times to run backups. For off-site backups, this helps tremendously as it can decrease the amount of load on your bandwidth. Having large backups run over the internet can severely impact your internet connection for you and others. The account tab lets you specify your name and email address, as well as enter a serial number should you choose to register CrashPlan and take advantage of one of their online backup subscriptions. The security panel allows you to specify that a password is required for any changes to CrashPlan. This can prevent people inadvertently deactivating or even disabling backups completely. You can also amend encryption information should you wish to as well. Finally, under Network, we can specify certain information such as limits to bandwidth and any network interface configurations, such as setting specific IP addresses. Finally, if we'd like to view a history of what's been going on with CrashPlan, we can use the History tab. This lets us know when backups have started, have stopped, what folders have been backed up, and where they've been backed up to. Now we know how to back up with CrashPlan, let's see how to restore files with CrashPlan as well. I'm going to delete the CrashPlan installation disk image, and then I'm going to empty the trash, so there's no way for me to recover the file. Thankfully, as I've just done a backup with CrashPlan to my external hard drive, I will be able to restore this file. To do this, I'm going to select the Restore panel. We're able to select which backup destination we'd like to restore from. If they're offline, we're unable to restore from them. As you can see, the Backups folder on my external hard drive has a full backup from less than a minute ago. Once I've navigated to the file or folder that I wanted to restore, I simply select the tick box and then click Restore. The restored file is placed up on the desktop. If there was multiple versions of the file, for example, multiple saved versions, we can even specify the date and time of the file that we wanted. This means that CrashPlan can also protect against the accidental saving of a file, or if you need to revert to an earlier version, but you haven't saved it elsewhere. You can then tell CrashPlan to select a specific date and time and restore that file to the desktop instead. And that's CrashPlan complete. You are now able to back up files to multiple destinations, such as hard drives, friends' computers, or computers on the same network, 
as well as restore files that may have been deleted or saved over. If you have any comments or feedback, we'd love to hear them in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching.